Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, it's always the crazy hair. Good morning, good morning. It's amazing. Ooh. <laughs> it's amazing how you can look in the mirror and it seems all right, but then when you get up close to the camera, you notice everything. I think I'll just push that back a little bit. There you go. <laughs> Sharing with you uh, openly and candidly about what's been happening in my home. I have uh, two adolescent children and um, they both have very different sensory needs. And I'm anticipating that they're going to be at home for a, lot, for a little bit longer. So uh, they're just doing their online schooling right now. And I'm starting to become aware of how dysregulated some of the patterns have been for them. And I have been particularly looking at the sensory worldview of my family and how that is being met in at home and how it's not being met because the, the issue is now that they are predominantly at home, they're not having an opportunity to interact with the world and get some of their sensory needs or get some of their um, or be able to avoid some of the sensory issues that they may have. And so being cooped up at home in a way um, also means that the home environment may aggravate or may not be meeting some of those sensory needs. Uh, so sensory issues are particularly important for kids who um, have uh, neurotypical or atypical uh, patterns, but in general, it's actually quite a helpful lens to look at when we're thinking about anxiety and emotional regulation. So uh, some kids are going to be sensory seeking uh, or uh, actually let's just say some human beings, shall we? It's not just about children. And some of us are going to be sensory avoiding and some of us have got a mix of that profile. So uh, for those of us who are sensory seeking, we actually really appreciate having sensory input. So different things to stimulate uh, our, our, our vision, uh, different things to smell, different things that we like to hear, different things to taste, uh, different things to touch. And, uh, you know, really looking at how much sensory input we are getting in our five senses, particularly during this time when we are at home and not having other environments to feed that. Some of us are going to be sensory avoiding. Um, and you can think about those five senses. And we could be particularly sensitive to being uh, to having people stand too close to us, um, hearing crunching noises, um, uncomfortable clothes, um, uh, you know, textures and tastes of food that when we're not comfortable with, um, certain noises that really, and you know, when we're all living under the one roof pretty much 24 seven uh, sensory of those of us who avoid sensory input can be particularly aggravated as well. Uh, for some of us, we may also really appreciate uh, a, a type of input that gives us pressure, um, a tight hug, um, being wrapped around in a blanket. Um, and for some of us uh, actually having uh, a feeling of you know uh, pulling up on our muscles pulling down uh, it gives us different sensory input and one of the things that i've been looking at at home is understanding and actually inquiring into what everybody's sensory needs are so a couple of things that uh, we've been building at home for ourselves we've got the candles going at night now uh, just as a sensory input for vision also getting um, a, a focal point away from screens and away from looking at things closely. Um, I've got the smells going as well around the different places of the house, sometimes alternating um, with having flowers, depends on your allergies, um, lotions that are available for us to put on ourselves. And of course, um, the thing that has become very, very popular these days, um, diffusers going as well. <clears throat> uh, we're working on touch now. Um, I've got the ingredients to make the homemade Play-Doh, although I don't know how that's going to go. But we have certainly brought out um, the cushions and the blankets, and I've actually brought the um, wheat bags out as well. You know, those weighted, heated things, or um, actually, it reminds me, I probably get the water bottles out as well um, for when we're actually uh, seeking to have a little bit of a, a weight or, or that kind of input for ourselves where we're feeling held in going as well. So um, 
The reason why I wanted to raise this is because I wanted to talk about particularly being aware that um, have you noticed that you might be snacking uh, a little bit more as well? You know, that could possibly also be related to just needing to have sensory input, um, you know, different textures or, or tastes because if home life is fairly neutral or sensory neutral or just not sensory discerning uh, to pick up some of the things that you may be needing uh, for your own uh, well-being, then that may be actually a part of it. So even with our food, you know, thinking about different textures, thinking about different colours that we may be seeing on our plate, um, thinking about different um, hot food, cold food, uh, these can all be a way really to make some intentional movements and directions towards getting some sensory input. Perhaps today you might actually want to just do a poll for yourself and maybe the people that you're living with. What kind of sensory input from the five senses really appeals to you that you might miss from not having uh, being out in the world? Uh, what are some of the, the sensory inputs from the five senses that you're actually really struggling with now that we're all at home, I know for us, a big one is sound. We, all four of us, have got different tolerances for sound, for when we're awake, for when we need to concentrate, uh, for what it requires us for rest, relax, wind down, and sleep, right? We all have different needs. So you might want to just do a poll and then perhaps think about ways that you can introduce some really sensory sensitive um, sensory need, uh, meeting some, some of those sensory needs in your own home and have some fun with it. All right, if I do get around to making the Play-Doh, I'll be sure to post a picture here. Okay, take care.